Hi, I'm James Dollar, and I'm going to talk about Uplogix. Uplogix is an out-of-band management solution, one of the few that actually manages devices. First, we give you low-level access to them uh, over asynchronous RS-232 serial to a console port, over low-level Ethernet to the devices, over USB. We're a very secure solution. Uh, no one would trust this system uh, plugged into their core routers and switches unless it was very secure. We meet, we meet FIPS 142 Level 2 for uh, encryption as well as opacity. Because it's locally connected to devices without using the network, we're a strong play for automation, both to collect data about the device as well as to take automated first-level actions. You're trying to keep your network up, we're trying to help you. First, we're built on a console server chassis. Uh, we have six uh, onboard RS-232 ports for plugging in uh, routers, switches, firewalls, network gear. We have our own console port for plugging in your laptop if you uh, bring it to connection so that you can always uh, have the same functionality whether you're coming over a network or you're local. We have a primary management Ethernet that we plug into our management VLAN. It's what we use for SSH, for TACACs, all those local uh, connections of TFTP and SCP. And then we have a secondary Ethernet connection that can be first a layer two bonded failover to the primary, or it can be an outband mode, which we'll discuss today. It can be uh, plugged into a, a promiscuous mode span port destination on a switch and basically collect PCAP uh, files. And it has the ability to tether, uh, plug other systems into it, or using uh, router traffic, uh, do what we call WAN traffic failover or carry critical traffic over the outband connection. We have an option slot where we can put in a V92 modem, an Iridium modem, an SFP cage for connection to uh, remote wiring closets or separate buildings, or an LTE modem. And we support everything from CAT M1 up to CAT4 LTE. We have an LCD for configuration and status, accessory ports where we plug in thumb drives or temperature probes. This model has dual power supplies in the rear. And then it has expansion bays where we can uh, add an additional eight ports of RS-232 serial for plugging into eight more devices. Uh, a 16 port high density uh, 68 pin connectors for connecting to uh, with fan out cables for connection to 16 more devices. Or an eight port ethernet card where we can plug into the management ethernet uh, of devices allowing for uh, GUI access, file transfer between them, as, as well as that ability to tether when we're out of band to actually carry through uh, critical traffic. Or we can take up to two 16 port cards for a total of 38 ports in this chassis. When we would deploy uh, with the high density cables uh, and the high density uh, cards, we include one and three meter high density fan out cables as well as a patch panel. And then we have a 500 appliance, which is exactly the same functionality without the expansion ability, generally designed for smaller branch offices or wiring closets. Both models come with the Uplogix local management software. They're Atom processor based. They include uh, AES-256 encrypted drives for storage of uh, configurations, well, as well as we have a virtual model that's designed to plug into a, a KVM ESXi or Hyper-V hypervisor. It's there to manage devices next to it as guest OSs in the hypervisor, like virtual route, switch, firewall, as well as to break out to physical devices that are near the device, like physical routers, power controllers, or LTE modems for that uh, secondary outband connection. I like to discuss what uh, in-band is a lot by talking about what out-of-band is. Over the in-band network, We'll focus on just one side of this eight site uh, example network. We'll do TCP port seven echoes, which we call pulse, just to validate that ports are open, that routes are advertised. Generally, they do it every 30 seconds for up to three endpoints. By default, the control center is one of the endpoints, but you can define a failover control, control center or another router or Linux machine somewhere on your network as a second and third pulse endpoint. Generally, you want more than one so that you can triangulate uh, outages even if one box or one VLAN goes down. In either, ca in either case, when this pulse fails, 
to all three sites, it can be one of the things that can drive the outbound connection, or it can just send information about that northbound into your trouble ticketing monitoring, but at least it can log that those uh, ports are not uh, open. So generally, 99% of the time over the in-band network, technician wants to log into a router connected to Uplogix. He'll log into the control center over a web browser. That'll probably do a, a, a connection over to ICE or Active Directory to basically build what permissions and groups, and then give you a display of the, uh, of the control center. And then you can navigate from there, clicking on one of our internal buttons to bring up a, a, an SSH connection. This is the graphical user interface, the control center. All the green icons are the ones that are heart beating in band, and the one orange one is heart beating out of band. But you can still do the same functionality, uh, whether it's in band or out band, about pushing configurations, uh, taking actions, as well as uh, obviously interacting with it uh, over SSH. We'll talk about two uh, models of uh, secondary network connectivity. The uh, dial-in overview is going to talk about dialing from the NOC or wherever your NOC team are into the local manager appliance. It can be done over the V92 or the Iridium satellite modem connections. It is off by default, so it's a feature you have to turn on. It's limited to a single user uh, at a time, uh, but it does have the ability to tunnel that device's console port back to one of your local COM ports on your workstation. And then that secure mode will actually build an AES encrypted HDLC connection uh, before it gets to the login prompt so that your uh, interactions are encrypted. And of course, if AAA is unavailable, we have the ability to cache per user credentials, including the ability to cache static usernames in a one use password environment. So here's an example of this focused again on one site. There's a key for encryption. User logs in, he gets a key. And then uh, using a RAS server or a local modem uh, on his laptop, basically connects to a modem bank. We already populate the phone number, dial the local manager at the end. It can check caller ID source to validate that it's coming from a proper caller ID. It can only answer if it's alarming if you want to turn that on. It does a key exchange and builds that 256 encrypted uh, link back to the workstation. Then he puts in his user and password prompt. <laughs> and gets a CLI. So then uh, that's the dial-in model. Uh, we'll, now we'll talk about the outband model. Uh, when outband mode is activated, we'll, uh, the local manager initiates it, basically a phone home. It can optionally build the reverse SSH and or an IPsec tunnel to secure that. We support multiple users and we re reroute network management protocols from the local manager like TACAX and Syslog over the outband connection. We also move default route to the outband. And then network administrators can still do changes from the control center. They can SSH into the local manager with their own tools, use the Uplogix terminal applet, and then it reconnect things like TACAX and RADIUS and Active Directory so that even in the one use password environment, you can continue that uh, over the outband mode. You can also tunnel vendor applications like a browser connection to some device or uh, tools like the Cisco ASDM to manage uh, advanced firewall tasks. And then the local manager is designed to return in-band when out-band is de deactivated, reestablishing in-band routes as well as uh, reconnecting uh, in-band network management protocols. So here's an example uh, where the local manager uh, using pulse or rule failure uh, decides to dial back in to the network, it's going to dial over a, a V92 modem in this case, connect to a RAS server. You'll notice that the site has gone gray down here because it hasn't communicated in more than two minutes. That may check uh, Active Directory or um, TACAX queue to make sure that the, user, the local manager can log in. And then he gets an IP path into the network. That RAS server is likely access list controlled, so it can only get communication toward the control center or the security and, and uh, syslog servers. Once it builds its TLS connection, you'll see that that connection will come up orange. It may also establish a reverse SSH tunnel so that you can get to that uh, device without needing to advertise routes all the way to that device. And again, we can forward on to 
uh, syslog and SNMP trap receivers. From the remote's perspective of, of the problem, what we see is the, as the issue. Now that connection's up, one of the simple ways to log into it is SSH. You can use your uh, default uh, SSH client. You can use the AppLogix terminal applet. Once we connect to the device, it prompts for a user password, which then can, if the connection is up and routable, get back to your uh, centralized uh, TACAC servers. May include that link over to Active Directory or some other uh, permissioning system to put you in a group. And then uh, basically connect your uh, SSH back to your workstation with the right uh, permissions uh, per port. It includes, again, that ability to forward GUI interfaces of vendor products or just browser traffic back to your local workstation as if it was a link local connection to that device. We're going to go through an example of bringing that connection up uh, using SMS and then demonstrate the cellular uh, outband mode. In the cellular mode, that we have, we have a radio area network that's always up. It's basically just uh, an RF connection into the cellular network, and we test that every 30 seconds to validate that it's still there and that the uh, signal hasn't gone, uh, hasn't degraded or gone away. So again, focused on the one site, we'll remove the in-band connectivity to show it all working by itself. User uh, logs into the control center, clicks the dial home button. Uh, the control center sends a SMTP-based SMS message out to the uh, radio network. Uplogix picks it up, decrypts it because it's encrypted, uh, it's only come from the control center, and if it matches the right uh, command, it can actually bring up that IP path into the cellular network. And in the most basic connectivity model, it's an SSH if it's all routable. The user just SSHs into the, uh, into the local manager over the IP address that's either uh, stored locally or statically defined. And if he's reconnected his ICE and his uh, Active Directory over that outband connection, then all that also could be used to provide his uh, local uh, command line interface, as well as that uh, vendor GUI. And importantly, we can get multiple users in over this at the same time, so they can work on different parts of the problem at the same time. Uh, this model will uh, include that reverse SSH tunnel, show how it works. Again, focused on one site. We build that RAN connection. We build the IP path into the APN. And then we build that uh, reverse SSH and our TLS heartbeat into the control center. Once that's established, you can have a user uh, from the browser interface log in. And if he has permissions to the uh, reverse SSH tunnel, he can basically SSH through the control center and then tunnel back over that persistent SSH uh, connection coming from the local manager and get his CLI uh, through that. The advantage of this is the users only have to have routes to the control center, the local manager only has to have routes to the control center, and uh, all the connectivity happens on the backside. Of course, that gives you that same CLI or GUI functionality at the edge. Another variation on that is uh, to add an IPsec. Again, radio area network first, IP path second. Here's our IPv2 IPsec VPN. Connecting to an out-of-band firewall somewhere. It might do a certificate check to make sure that it's not revoked. And then once that uh, succeeds, it'll build its RSSH and TLS connections into the control center. And the same functionality uh, is possible, again, with that IPv2 VPN in place. And over this model, you might not have to uh, run reverse SSH. You could maybe just SSH right to that device for the same functionality. One more we're going to talk about. I'm just going to build out the, uh, the exact same connectivity to get us back to that same point. Now we're going to talk about WAN traffic failover, or the ability to tunnel traffic through that, uh, that device. So we'll just talk about this one part of the network and leave off uh, the left side of the network for a moment. So in WAN traffic failover, uh, most of the uh, local manager Ethernet ports can be configured to address translate packets through the outband connection. It is not possible during the in-band mode. 
It's only available for IP UDP, TCP, and ICMP. So no native GRE or ESP. Uh, if you're going to build IPsec tunnels, they need to be encrypted and uh, with probably UDP or TCP. And then connectivity is limited to routes that are in place for outband mode. So if we've brought up a, a VPN, then all connectivity must be through that VPN. Or if it's just open to the internet or to some world routable addresses, then it can it can really you know connect to any address. And then we can make predefined configuration changes to help shape that traffic while it's running in that, in that mode. So let's take this example. The user is green and happy. Everything's working. Network goes down. Logix can push uh, a restricted route map or uh, a route preference or configuration snippet to that router, bringing up the connection into the Uplogix spare Ethernet port. And then once uh, outband mode is established, it'll actually allow that natting of a DMVPN or SD-WAN through the Uplogix, through uh, whatever Uplogix is already defined, which may include an IPsec tunnel, back to some routable interface that can even reconnect uh, routable IP over that connection. And again, we call that WAN traffic failover because we're not a router, but we are able to carry critical traffic uh, over the outband connection. Talk a little bit about RAS options. If, you do, or if you're in the uh, dial-up uh, world, uh, there's a couple of commercial products available. One is from Patton. It's a PRI-based, starts at 20, uh, 24 modems, and it goes up to 196. Uh, it's a commercial solution that's uh, supportable today. Uh, Cisco has only one product in the space now with analog modems, and that is the 891F router. It has a single modem, and so uh, in both of these options, we have uh, configuration files for and, and, uh, and reference designs for their uh, connectivity for both building that IP connection or being a dial-out RAS server. Another solution might be to use a Cisco 4400 with the uh, HWIC NIM uh, cards, the 16-port NIM cards, fanning out to standalone modems. Those modems could be in a hunt group. Uh, and share the same phone number so that you can support uh, many connections concurrently. And we support up to, well, I guess you could get up to 196 connections over uh, 4451 with this model. Now we're going to talk about a nipper and sipper uh, solution. Uh, this is really going to uh, piggyback on what we were showing with IPsec a, a few minutes ago. Again, talking about the only one site that's gone down over a LTE connection, we build that RAN on the nipper side, build an IP-based connection into the APN, build that IPv2 IPsec VPN into the out-of-band firewall, check your certificate rev revocation list. If it's in the list, open the port, and then opening uh, the TLS connection back to the control center and the optional RSSH tunnel builds you know, the nipper side of the network user wanting to get to that component and those tools, then force logs in over the control center, either reverse SSH or SSH back in, and of course getting to the GUI tools or the uh, CLI on the nipper side of the network. Thanks for taking the time today to talk about Uplogix and outband mode.